So today's on videos is the haircut episode. And yes, I appear in front of the camera because I have so much to say and so much to show you and I have to talk because with the format I've been using in the past like couple months, it's uh, really a pain in the ass to, to make the editing. So in front of the camera, it's much faster and I can show you way more detail and explain a little bit more stuff uh, that I've done. And I don't want like to show you the stuff that I've done because uh, it's already done and I already recorded everything almost everything and I lost some footage but that's okay um, so uh, like six months ago three months ago or even a years ago I put some koals into this aquarium obviously I put like a ton uh, of koals and what's happening is eventually they just want to kill each other uh, because they fight for space despite they, they fight for the, the light uh, so it's it's us, the gardener of this uh, beautiful garden, you have to, to, to maintain this. So today is chat time. So my aquarium has been growing a lot in the past uh, couple months now, and I really want to keep all this uh, diversity of corals. I have to come to the conclusion that I had to cut some of the coral to shrink them down a little bit. And this is what I'm going to show you. So uh, this is the last time that we see the crumb uh, like it is right now. I mean, <laughs> I really want to keep houses. I know there's a big problem that is coming up. So I just want to, to prevent those problems. And to give you an idea of what is happening, if you look like my Sunularia, the white one on the right, it is touch a little bit the Duncan and the Duncan doesn't like that. So this is a problem that I have to resolve. Another one is the feather duster uh, on the front. He grew a lot and all of my feather duster are doing so well in my tank and it's become like a problem. So it creates a little bit of shadow on the Colostera so I have to do something about this. Uh, another problem that I had and I was a little bit too late for this one unfortunately is the brown zoanthid that look a little bit um, yellow when you look at on the top. Unfortunately this species of zoa is super invasive it grow way too fast for my nano and it just killed the colostera that was uh, on the right so this is a good example uh, what's happening when you let the the full nature do its thing there's always like one species that want to dominate everything now for the setup this is really particular so the first thing that i use is the dremel after that, I have a cutter, brush tooth, some stuff to just cut uh, the crawls or like to pop the crawl, something to just cut, a ropes. Uh, after that, I have like carbon, that I, a new carbon that I'm going to use, some frag plug that is in the water, some revive for the zipping to just help the, the tissue. After that, I have the glue. And the glue is a little bit special because I just don't want to waste those glue. Uh, even if I don't like them, I don't like waste, so I remove the, the branding on them, so to not show that. And after that I have a bowl, and that's pretty much my setup. So this is my frag tank. This is where I'm going to put uh, all the curls when they are, they are frags, and they are cut, and they are healthy. I'm going to just put them there. So right before I cut all the curls into the aquarium, I wanted to just put an extra bag of uh, carbon because I have a lot of soft coral and I'm not quite sure how the coral will respond. Um, so because there are a lot of like toxins are going to be released from like the soft coral, uh, there's some mucus, there's some coral that I'm going probably like, to kill. So I just want to make sure that all the toxins, all the bad stuff are, are going to be absorbed as much as I, uh, they can be. So this is why I, I just add an extra uh, carbon to make sure that it absorbs right away. So before the preparation, I made a new batch of salt water. It's a 2D5 PPT and it's already uh, good to go. The temperature is also fine because it's like 25 degrees Celsius in the uh, apartment. So this is the water change is probably like the, the, the most important thing uh, into the, the whole preparation uh, because uh, th there's a lot of toxin uh, are going to be released. So because I knew that I was going to make a water change, I took the opportunity to uh, try to kill a little bit more of Aptasia. Uh, because since I introduced this uh, pipe organ, this is the red structure um, that you can see on the videos, I, I really struggled with the Aptasia and I tried like the, the Aptasia X from Ritzy. 
which is was was working but slowly with the Aptesia they started to be not really affected by the solution so I try something like a little bit more stronger which is the F Aptesia but I'm not super convinced by this uh, solution either because there's one thing called the gravity and every time you just use the uh, the, the paste it just go down to the the sand because it's it's super heavy uh, but if you touch the aptesia it will work and i also tried to put it on uh, one of my zointed like the bronze zointed that i saw that was going to to <laughs> invade this uh, little garden zointed so it kind of ish work but i'm not super yet like convinced by this solution the best thing i think for killing the aptesia in my case will be like a, with a nudie branch but i just don't have one uh, right now all right so now it's time to take down this aquarium and it's really really hurt me because i think the aquarium is really beautiful so the first girl that i wanted to extract is the sacrophyton is the the green one of the first like it's been like one years since uh, it's been there it was a really tiny frag at the time and obviously uh, when I want to record this uh, specific coral he was actually shedding so all the you can see the dead skin he was starting to open his polyp back the funny thing about this coral is that I lost the colony but I have a lot of frag in my frag tank of this colony so what I'm going to do is just take one uh, little frag from the frag aquarium and just like switch them and the reason why I'm switching is because I know this one, this frag, particular frag, is going to explode in the next couple months because I had some experience with those uh, sacrophyton and once they, they, they get like in a specific size and they can reach the light, they are going to explode in growth. So I'm just stopping right before it explodes in growth and I'm replacing it with the small one and I just want like the small one to take its time to grow. Um, I don't want to rush anything. I want something like this more uh, low maintenance for me. And so the next one that I wanted to cut is the Duncanus Pamia. It's probably the fastest LPS coal that grew into my tank. It's completely crazy how fast uh, it grew. It was really uh, doing well into my tank, uh, but it was it started to be like really big for my nano aquarium. So I decided to just cut in half. I think I put it in like eight months ago and it started with seven head and now I have more than double th that amount of head in about like uh, eight months so it really grew fast and uh, yeah it's really I'm really proud of this coral. And when I removed the Duncan I also took the opportunity to extract that um, I think it's a Antelia or maybe it's a Sterosoma we're not quite sure but that coral is the fastest coral that I ever seen in my life. It's completely absurd how fast it grow. So I'm playing a little bit with fire with this one. And what I've done is I just took out the, the rock that was attached to it. And I basically like split in half. And the other half is simply to, to have it in my frag tank. So I can have like a multiple uh, frag of this uh, coral. And here are a good example on how the coral spread. So this is just one polyps. But it's all it takes. So once there's like one polyps that float like this into your tank. It will just spread like fire. Speaking of feather duster that are doing very well. This is a great example. So unfortunately it's putting a little bit too much pressure on the cholesterol, it's the green one, and the polyp I could see like it started to, to retract. So this is a little bit too much to my taste and I wasn't quite sure what to do with this one. But after I decided to just cut the tube and what I'm going to do is just guide the feather duster once it regrow the, the, the tube and guide him a little bit more on the right side. Uh, it's just like a bonsai, but it, it's really tough, honestly. And also the same thing with the Gorgonian. Uh, there was like a branch that was touching the Colossera. So I just want to give a little bit more room to, to grow so the polyps can like just uh, fluff a little bit more. Uh, so this is a kind of little trick that I like to do in my tank that you, people don't really record, but it, it helped the coral uh, over time. <laughs> So this sacrophyton is the main reason why I wanted to break down my aquarium. It started to be way too big for my aquarium. Just to give you an idea, this type of sacrophyton, they can be as big as my full rectangular shape of my aquarium in the nature, in the ocean. Uh, it can be really, really big. So unfortunately, I had to detach the sacrophyton, uh, the feet under the rock. It was well attached and <laughs> it made me feel really bad because I knew I was hurting him. but. 
it's for the good of all the other corals in that are in the shadow of this coral so uh, I had to do it. So the reason why I wanted to extract the, the sacrophyton from the coral is because I knew that I was going to make a lot of frag, a lot of pieces. I will be honest, I, I went like really aggressive with this one. Um, it's not like a full colony, it's like medium size, but I, I was aggressive and I didn't leave a lot of uh, surface um, area from the, the main feet, the main frag. Uh, but I have some experience and in the past it worked, but if I go too aggressive, it, I can't kill the coral. So I have to be careful, but usually uh, I have like a, you saw in my frag tank, like I have a lot of pieces like that and I do the same operation uh, all the time. So what was important for me was not to mix the uh, the mucus, uh, all the toxin that was going to be released from the sacrophyton to the aquarium. So that's why I took out the, the, the whole thing out to make sure like it doesn't suffocate uh, the other corals that are in my aquarium. And to help the, the healing process of the frag, I used the product of Revive from Two Little Fishes because, and, and I used that product specifically because it's uh, more natural, um, the ingredient that it has inside, and it's, it's more like gentle and it helped the processes of the healing uh, all around the, the wound. So I would recommend this if you frag, uh, use the Revive, it's pretty good for that. And to attach all this, I had some frag plugs, I had some little uh, pebble wax, uh, aragonic wax uh, from my outdoor cram, and I made like small pieces. And I used like four different ways to attach a frag to a plug, just to show you. But unfortunately, um, I lost the, the footage. There's lots of things you can do with this stick, Elmo. Okay, time out, time out. I need to say something. When I do uh, the recording with my camera, with all the processes of fragging, it's a really pain in the ass for me because uh, I just have like one camera uh, and I don't have a lot of space. So it's every time that I document something with a camera like this, it's for me, it's really, really hard. and the results are not really uh, good most of the time. And that badge was like, uh, uh, not that, that particularly good. So when I don't have the camera, like in my frag look pretty good, but when it's with the camera, it's awful. Like just to give you an idea, like I have to stand up on the stand to go to my aquarium, uh, my head hit the light time to time. Uh, I try to <laughs> record the stuff that in like in top view and my belly uh, just, uh, touch the, the tripod. So what I want to do right now is uh, just to give you like some tips uh, how I frag myself up because I use like four ish different technique for this uh, videos and I lost some footage so I couldn't do the video like I wanted to do so whatever. So let's pretend this is like one of the, the, the frag uh, like a soft coral. So I'm gonna show you like from the worst to the best technique in my opinion. So the worst technique I think is like, I always start with a rack and after that I use like the, the frag. So most of the time you can see some people like they use like some glue, you glue it like on the rack, like over there and you put the piece on top and you call it the day. The problem is like after maybe one day, a week, couple days, the, the frag will just leave. That's how, that's, so this is what happened with soft coral, with hard coral like acropora and stuff like that, like it's super easy, plug, that's it. Another technique that I use is uh, the use of an elastic, whoops, like this. And usually what uh, the people like do, and sometimes I do too, depending on the coral, uh, you just basically like uh, do like this. It's like, oh my God, like you stick, perfect, nice, cool, no. The problem is like when you use the elastic and you put a lot of pressure, uh, the, um, the coal will just basically like split in half and you're gonna have like a one half that's going to float away. So this can be like a, not the best way. So if you use elastic, the best way to use the elastic is to not put a lot of pressure. So I'm gonna give you like an example. The idea is to just do like this. Not a lot of pressure like leave a wiggle room. So there's no like pressure like this, just a little wiggle. The idea is when you have the, uh, the, the frag piece, it's just to have like one contact like this. And eventually what's it going to do, it will slowly 
attach like this and eventually it will form like a round shape and it will just grow like this. So the, the idea is just to have like a one contact with the rock and just let the coral uh, do his thing like to attach naturally to the rock and it will do uh, its thing correctly. So this is a technique. Uh, another technique that I like to use is the uh, thread uh, cotton mask like this. This is the idea nature crown. Uh, it's like a biodegradable uh, thread like, honestly, it takes like maybe a couple months, years to degrade into the aquarium. But the idea is like to just have like a small wrap, rope, thread uh, like this. And it's just basically around like, so where's my thread? Do like this. The problem when I, I've done like the batch that you see right now is I strangle basically like the, the frag like this. Keep in mind that when you have like the coral, the soft coral, it's like a sponge. So when the, the, the frag piece is out of the water, all the water goes away. And you, you're you left with like a really, really, really small piece that is basically like dry, uh, dry. So what I recommend when you use like a thread like this is just to use gently like this, no pressure. The same thing with the elastic. And at the end, what I do, like uh, just on the back, uh, the way like uh, I just like cut the wire and I use like uh, the glue to just seal basically the, the thread like this w when you use like thread like this what can happen is the the coral can grow like this way can grow this way and it can like split the coral so be careful with that it's not the perfect solution honestly uh it depends on the coral so i probably wouldn't do that again with that batch honestly the batch is fine but uh it's not the best way in my opinion the best technique to frag stuff and make like a to make sure like the frag is on the core of the rock is with nothing i'm gonna show you so this is my frag tank and usually what i have in my frag tank i have like a basket like this and what i do i make sure like i don't have a lot of flow around this area and actually i think my pump is turned off right now but uh, i just put the the piece on the basket with a low flow, like you can see, there's like a, actually one of the frag over there. Uh, those of, by the way, they are aragonic rock. Like they're just like small uh, piece of rock, nothing particular. So the idea is like to just let the nature do its thing. And to me, this is the best way. And to show you an example, all the frag that you see over there, they are made like this. You can see, I let the nature do its thing, attach to the rock, but I attach the rock to the plug so it's easier for me to just put the coal into the air crate like this so to me this is the best way uh, is basically let the nature do its thing so what i did after all the frag pieces were done i put them into the nano tank instead of the frag tank and the reason is is because i want to make sure that the the healing process is more smoother because if you put the frag piece into a new aquarium the transition and the adaptation is going to be like much harder for the, the the frag that are already adapted to the the whole the previous uh, aquarium in my case is the nano tank so and i also want to make sure like i monitor them to make sure like they don't like melt or something like that so this way is like it's a little bit more smooth so the healing was there so after three days i put them into the frag tank and they, they have been there uh, since so after that we had the pipe organ and this is not the pipe organ that i had in mind initially i had another version of this pipe organ it's like a white version from the fiji i think and i couldn't find anywhere so i went with this pipe organ and those things they really really grow fast so be careful and i kind of like regret to have that pipe organ because the the i had like a initially like the worms inside but i, I removed it with the the dipping but I also had some aptasia that was hiding inside the crevice. And because of the, the way the structure is made with the, the pipe organ, you can have like any kind of weird stuff that grows into it and you just can't see them. So unfortunately, I had like an infestation of aptasia that was like inside of them. Uh, so I just removed like a big chunk and uh, I saw like a new aptasia. So I had to make some cleanup with that. So the next coral is the gunner para. So I had in mind that I was going to extract the coral and just cut in half. But unfortunately, the, that coral is so well encrusted into the rock, 
I really tried to extract with the tools, I tried with my hand, my finger, and I was forcing so much that I, I was scared to break the glass, break the rug, kill a curl, or something like that, and I decided, you know what, maybe it's not worth it, and I decided to, to let it go. So he won that battle, but this is not over. Unfortunately, I hurt a little bit him, but the next day he was totally fine. So the next color that I wanted to cut is the white Cinellaria. And this is a little bit crazy because I put that coral just a month ago and it's already too big to my taste. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna give him like a little bit uh, of a haircut and I just cut some branches and I'm gonna wait a little bit that he regrow again. So right now I have like two or three frag to my frag tank. So usually when I cut corals, I make some frags, but in this case, uh-uh. And as you can see, it literally killed one of my Colossera. And it took approximately like two weeks, I think. So that brown zoanthid is just like a pure pest. And in the past, I already removed a lot of them. But this time, you know what? I decided I'm gonna remove all of them. Uh, I just can't handle the, the fast growing coral and it just killed the other coral. So I decided, you know what? It's over for them. So that green Cinellaria is probably one of the first group of coral that I put into my nano. It didn't grow as much as I thought because it's a little bit like in the corner and it doesn't like receive that much of light and this was intended. So I didn't have like to cut him very often. It, this is basically the first time that I'm actually removing the, the full Cinellaria. So what I'm doing is like I'm going to replace them with two frags that I, that I had into my frag tank and I'm just gonna wait until those two frags will regrow again. So there's one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is everything that you see is actually like a short video but the reality is completely different. For me this took place in like different days. So I had like a strategy. The first day is to remove all the, the big coral and the easiest coral to remove first but most importantly to remove the coral that they can be toxic to the aquarium. So my water change are synchronized. I didn't do a water change right after I cut the corals. I waited a day so all the coral can release all the toxin and the next morning I just flush basically all the, the water and I just replenish with the new water. In 12 days I did three water change and they are each like three quarter percent of water change so it's really heavy water change but it really really helped the health of the corals. Oh, oh. So for the final two corals I waited a little bit for those one because I knew they were going to be really hard to frag. So this is the genus Clevularia but inside of that there's like two species. So there's one with yellow fluorescent and there's another one with like green fluorescent in the middle. So the one that I wanted to frag is actually the green one because it's like on the top of the rock. The problem is how to extract those coral when they are uncrusted to the rock. So for that I have three tools in mind. There's like one big tweezer, there's a really smaller one and there's also like my usual cutter. And because I lack of space, I couldn't record everything. But after playing with all the tools, the one that I really liked was the small tweezer. So the key is, is to try to extract the foot of the coral and then put that foot into the glue of the frag. And it did work, but I already had a lot of that sample coral into my frag tank. So after this one, I was left with the Knopia, which is another genus of the Clavularia. I must admit that I was really pleased with that one because it grew exactly where I wanted it to be and it grew the size of the chunk like I was hoping for. But like many other corals, it was time to make a hard cut. So even if it's the same genus of the Clavularia, this one was a little bit more fragile and it was like more tiny also. But I was able to extract some sample and I used the exact same technique as the previous Clavularia and it seemed to have worked pretty well. I made two frags and one of them was looking really well. All right, so this is my haircut. I'm not quite sure if you can see my haircut, uh, but the haircut for the, the aquarium, well, here it is. Honestly, it looked like pretty much like previously. Um, it's crazy, something like you, you remove so much coral, but you had already so much coral before that it doesn't look different. But I'm very happy with the result. Like it look, it's not it looking as great as before, but it's gonna take like another, I think it's gonna take like eight months before it grow again. I'm gonna make a, another haircut like I did. And people say sometimes like I'm a little bit crazy, but look at that. The Colossera with the feather duster, I told you that I was going to put it like more on the, the right side and I did it. But there's one thing that you probably see in my videos all the time is <laughs> the algae. 
yeah um, I'm starting to have some algae and this is becoming a problem uh, previously I didn't really care that much I was trying to fight with the water change but now I have like more uh, GFO but I still have some algae and for that I have a solution and I call it the blue pill of algae but give me a little bit of time because it takes some like two weeks or three weeks to take effect so uh, give me some time <laughs> thank you so much if you watch the whole video I salute you thank you bye bye